Google is finally making it easier for Pixel users to unlock their phones even when they can't see where to place their finger. Since the launch of the Pixel 6 series in 2021, all Pixel models have featured under-display fingerprint sensors. However, these sensors have only worked when the screen is on, unlike most smartphones that allow fingerprint unlocking even when the display is off. With Android 16, that limitation is changing, bringing a much-needed improvement to Pixel devices. The screen off fingerprint unlock feature first appeared in Android 16 Developer Preview 2, but it was initially limited to the Pixel 9 series. Now, with the Android 16 Beta 3 release, this feature is available for all Pixel models with an under-display fingerprint scanner. This includes the Pixel 6, Pixel 6 Pro, Pixel 6 Up, Pixel 7, Pixel 7 Pro, Pixel 7 Up, Pixel 8, Pixel 8 Pro, Pixel 8 Up, Pixel 9, Pixel 9 Pro. Pixel 9 Pro XL, and Pixel 9a. Unless Google removes the feature before Android 16 stable release next quarter, all compatible Pixel devices will get access to it. This new feature allows users to unlock their Pixel phones by simply placing a finger on the fingerprint sensor, even if the display is completely off. Previously, users had to wake the screen before using the sensor, which added an extra step. Now, unlocking is much faster and more intuitive, making the overall experience smoother. For those who don't want to wait for the stable Android 16 update, but are also hesitant about installing beta software, there's an alternative. Keeping the always-on display enabled prevents the screen from going completely dark, which ensures the fingerprint sensor remains active. This can be done by going to settings, then display and touch, then lock screen and toggling on always show time and info. Once Android 16 is installed, whether in beta or stable form, the screen off fingerprint unlock feature will be disabled by default. To enable it, users can go to settings, then security and privacy, then device unlock, then fingerprint unlock. After entering their PIN, they need to tap fingerprint unlock again and toggle on screen off fingerprint unlock. Once this is done, the phone can be unlocked just by placing a finger on the sensor, even when the screen is off. Users who disable the always-on display to save battery life may find this new feature especially useful. With screen off fingerprint unlock turned on, there's no need to manually wait the phone, reducing unnecessary screen usage while maintaining convenience. This update puts Pixel devices on par with other smartphones that have long offered this functionality. Though it may seem like a small change, it significantly improves usability by making unlocking faster and more seamless. Pixel users running the latest Android 16 beta can try it out now while others will gain access when the stable update rolls out in the coming months. This feature is just one of many changes coming with Android 16, and it's likely to be well-received by users who have been waiting for a more efficient unlocking method. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you found this information helpful, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more updates. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Google has finally introduced the Pixel 9a, a mid-range smartphone designed to offer solid performance at a competitive price. However, there's a compromise. This model doesn't have enough RAM to fully support Google's advanced AI features. Reports confirm that while the Pixel 9a does come with Google's Gemini Nano AI, it's a scaled-down version. Due to its 8 gigabytes of RAM, the phone isn't capable of handling the full range of AI features that premium Pixel models offer. Users will still be able to access AI-driven tools through the power button or a dedicated app, but the processing will not be as fast or efficient as what's available on the higher-end models. With previous Pixel models, Google has been integrating AI-powered features using Gemini Nano, but the Pixel 9 8 takes a slightly different approach. Instead of using the standard Gemini Nano version found in more expensive models, this phone comes with a lighter variant called Gemini Nano 1.0 XXA. Meanwhile, other Pixel 9 models run on a more capable version, Gemini Nano XS. The reason behind this difference is simple, memory capacity. High-end Pixel devices come with 12 gigabytes of RAM, which allows them to process AI tasks smoothly. The Pixel 9a, on the other hand, only has eight gigabytes, making it less capable when it comes to handling these advanced functions. To maintain overall performance, Google had to make some adjustments, meaning that certain AI features won't be available on the Pixel 9a. This situation is similar to what happened with the Pixel 8, where Google initially announced that it wouldn't support Gemini Nano at all. However, the company later introduced a developer preview of a smaller AI model for that device. That same compact AI model is now being used in the Pixel 9a. So what does this mean for everyday use? The Pixel 9a will still support AI-driven tools, but they will function differently compared to flagship models. On premium devices, AI runs continuously in the background, providing instant access to features. With the Pixel 9a, however, AI functions will only activate when needed, which might cause slight delays in performance. Another drawback is that some AI-powered tools won't be included at all. For example, 
Pixel Screenshots, a feature designed to organize screenshots using AI, is missing. Similarly, Call Notes, which can summarize conversations using on-device AI, is not available. There is also uncertainty about whether the Pixel 9a will include Google's scam detection feature in the phone app. Google hasn't confirmed whether this function will be supported, so it remains unclear. On the positive side, recorded call summaries will still work. This feature doesn't rely entirely on AI processing, but instead transcribes the call and generates a summary based on the text. Because of this, users will still have access to this functionality without needing the full AI model. As of now, Google hasn't provided a complete list of missing AI features on the Pixel 9a. The phone is expected to launch in April, though an exact release date hasn't been announced yet. Once it becomes available, real-world testing will reveal which AI functions work as expected and which ones are left out. For those considering the Pixel 9a, it's important to be aware of these limitations before making a decision. Samsung's upcoming Galaxy S25 Edge is already sparking curiosity and for good reason. One of the most talked about aspects of this phone is its incredibly slim build, measuring only 5.84 millimeters in thickness. While such a design choice raises concerns about battery life and overall performance, early reports suggest that Samsung has managed to maintain impressive power without major compromises. Initial leaks hinted that the S25 Edge would feature the Snapdragon 8 Elite processor, the same chipset found in the other models of the S25 series. Now, recent benchmark results from a Korean variant, SMS 937N, confirm this information. Not only does it run on the Snapdragon 8 Elite, but it also uses a specially optimized, overclocked version tailored for Samsung devices. Surprisingly, the S25 Edge delivers performance levels close to the top-tier Galaxy S25 Ultra, proving that its ultra-thin design does not necessarily need weaker hardware. One of the biggest challenges with slim smartphones is balancing performance with heat management. Typically, thinner phones struggle with cooling, as there is less space to incorporate efficient thermal solutions. Samsung has reportedly made improvements, but concerns remain. Some users have already noted heating issues in the base Galaxy S25 model, despite its enhanced cooling system. With the S25 Edge being even slimmer, keeping temperatures stable under heavy workloads could be tricky. Some speculate that its larger screen might help with heat dissipation, but real-world testing will be the ultimate test. Speaking of the display, the S25 Edge is expected to feature a 6.7-inch screen, offering a spacious and immersive viewing experience. For those who enjoy photography, Samsung might include a 200-megapixel main camera similar to what is found in the Ultra variant. However, to maintain the slim design, the number of rear cameras has reportedly been reduced from 3 to 2. The battery capacity is rumored to be 3,900 milliampere hours, which is smaller than the batteries found in other S25 models. This could raise concerns about shorter battery life, though Samsung may introduce software-based optimizations to extend usage time. Pricing details remain unclear. Some sources predict that the S25 Edge will be priced similarly to the Galaxy S25 Plus, while others believe it may cost more due to its premium design. Another unanswered question is its availability in different regions. As of now, it is uncertain if this model will launch globally or remain exclusive to select markets. Many potential buyers are eagerly waiting for Samsung to confirm where the device will be sold. Another aspect generating buzz is the choice of materials for the phone's build. Some leaks suggest that Samsung might use a ceramic body, while others hint at a titanium frame. Either way, it seems the brand is focusing on a high-end aesthetic, making the S25 Edge one of its most visually appealing flagship models. If released, this device will likely compete with Apple's rumored iPhone 17 Air, which is also expected to emphasize a thin and lightweight design.